Hi, this video is going to explain the connection between the average and the instantaneous rates of change. In this video, to align what we've been learning about in modeling so far, I'm going to use the input or independent variable as t to denote time. And in one dimension, if I have one single output or dependent variable, one single state that's changing in time, I'm going to denote that as x. So I'm going to be using x of t throughout what I'm doing, but in other resources you may see this referred to as y of x. And so where I have a delta x over delta t, you may see a delta y over delta x. Um, I hope that's not too confusing, but just try to focus on what's being the input and what's being the output. And you'll see that in general, whenever we talk about rates of change, we're talking about rise over run. And so we're talking about output divided by input, the change in the dependent variable divided by the change in the independent variable. And so that is always going to be consistent, um, even though what we call the input and output variable as letters, that may change. Okay, so first let's do a little review from pre-calculus where you were introduced to the average rate of change, sometimes abbreviated with AROC. Um, at that time, we were talking probably about slopes and lines, and uh, we learned that you can calculate the slope between two points on any graph, even if it's not a linear graph. On any graph, what you can do is you can choose a point, which I'm calling T1, X1, and then you can consider, on average, what's the rate of change between this point as I travel to another point on the curve, a graph, t2, comma, x2. Okay, and so in order to calculate that, we simply do the normal slope equation, which is the difference in the output divided by the difference in the input. Um, so you can see that here is x2 minus x1 over t2 minus t1, or shortened an abbreviation where delta means the difference. And so it's delta x over delta t. Keep in mind that the units on this quantity as a rate of change are going to be um, the output units divided by the input units. And so let's say that x of t is maybe a, a population of bacteria as it grows by the hour. If I calculated this rate of change between two time points at which I measured the bacterial growth, the rate of change's units would be number of bacteria per hour. So it's going to be the x units per time units. Um, that's general. All right, and so geometrically what that is, is that's going to be the slope of the secant line, where the secant line is just um, connecting two points on a graph by drawing a line through those two points. But what happens when those two points get closer and closer and closer together, when these two points merge into one, the concept of a secant line geometrically becomes the concept of a tangent line. And so um, make sure you check out the links to the videos that I have in the description. I'm sorry, the links to the Desmos activities that I have in the description there because I have some really cool activities on Desmos where you're going to be able to visualize a secant line. And then with the slider for H, you bring things closer and closer, to, closer together, and then you see that you've got a line that's just touching the curve, and that's why it's called the tangent line. So in order to skip from average rate of change down to instantaneous rate of change, which is also known as the derivative, what we're going to do is we're going to consider the limit as the difference between the two time points merges into one. And so you can think of this as time point number two getting closer and closer and closer until it's right almost exactly equal to time point number one. We can never actually set it exactly equal because then we would get an expression zero over zero. And that's an indeterminate form. We don't really know what zero divided by zero is. Um, not yet, anyway. So that's why we have the concept of a limit, where we're just going to think about what happens as they get closer and closer and closer together, but we have to resist the urge that exactly setting them equal to each other, otherwise this would just come out as 0 over 0. Okay? But in that conceptual limit, as t2 approaches t1, the average rate of change above delta x over delta t is going to be called dx dt, which is also the x prime that we've been working with in modeling. Right, and that interpretation is going to be the slope of the tangent line, and it's also referred to as the derivative or the instantaneous rate of change. 
Okay, so let's see how we can start calculating this and putting it into practice with an example. Um, here I've chosen an example which represents um, a sigmoidal type of response. Uh, anytime you have a curve that kind of, it's like bottoms out here and then it curves up and then it bottoms out again up here, kind of looks like an S shape, that's called a sigmoid. And those are really common all over the place when we're trying to bo uh, model biological phenomena. Okay, um, here for this sigmoid, I've chosen to use a power of cubed. But you may also see that sigmoids um, come in the form of a rational function, which is the ratio of two polynomials. And you can use several different orders for the polynomials. Um, as long as you have the same order on the top and the bottom, then you know that as t gets larger and larger, you're going to get this asymptotic behavior at a finite value. Okay, so here this is going to asymptote up, up until to an x value of 1 as we get t larger and larger. And um, if you raise the order, like if you use a fourth, t to the fourth on top and bottom instead of t to the cubed, you'll see that you get a steeper response in the middle. If you use t to the fifth, t to the sixth, or seventh on top and bottom, you'll see that this curve changes to become steeper and steeper still. And choosing how steep you want this sigmoidal curve to be is going to um, come into play as we start to learn more about nonlinear dynamics later. Okay. Um, for now, we're just going to we're just going to do an example of calculating an average rate of change. So the average rate of change, like before from pre-calculus, is defined as the slope of the secant line between two points. And so the two things you need to tell me if you ask me to calculate an average rate of change, you got to tell me where to start and you got to tell me where to end. Okay? And so that can come in two forms. Either I can literally tell you the starting and ending point for the input, or I could tell you the starting point and then I could give you a value of delta t. So I could tell you how far away from the starting point I want you to move. Um, here I've given the two starting po the starting point t equals one and the end point t equals 1.5. And so visually on the graph, really I'm talking about what's the average rate of change between this point here and a point that's 0.5 units in time away from it. So it might be like right around there. All right. Um, I actually don't even need to give you the output. I could have just given you the input values and the equation. And then what you do for each input value is you plug it into the equation like you see me doing here. For the first time, point t equals 1, I'm evaluating x of 1 by putting in a 1 for t in the equation and calculating that to be a half or 0 0.5. And then likewise, to get the out point for the second value, t is equal to 1.5, I'm going to plug in a 1.5 everywhere I see the t above there. And that's approximately 0 0.7714. Then if I want to calculate the average rate of change, I just have to take the difference in the y's and divide that, I'm oh, sorry, the difference in the x's, the difference in the output variable, and divide that by the difference in the input variable. And this dividing out that ratio there gives me around 0 0.5428. So that's my average rate of change when my two points are 0 0.5 time units apart. But what's my instantaneous rate of change? You see all over the place when we're doing modeling that in the model, in the state equations, we're defining what x prime is. We're not talking about average rates of change. We're talking about the instantaneous. And so now we have to get a feel for how those are calculated. Um, in this very first part where we're just kind of um, learning about the instantaneous rate of change as uh, some kind of limit from the average rate of change, a first glance at those values is going to be found by making the delta t smaller and smaller and smaller. So what's the delta t for this example here? Remember, it's the difference in the two time values. So this delta t is only 0 0.5. That's not really that small. Remember, I want the limit as delta t gets um, really, really, really close to 0. So I'd rather use a delta t is equal to 0 0.1 or 0.01 or 0.001. And for each of those, I'm going to have to go through this whole computation again and again um, where these two points are going to get closer and closer together. 
So that's going to be a lot of hand calculation work to do that by hand, um, but I've also got a fun visual way where I'm going to be using the Desmos link that you see in the description in order for you to see how this pans out as we try to really get an idea of what the value of x prime exactly at t is equal to 1 is going to be by using successively smaller values for the delta t. Computer, you see that I've clicked on the link that you'll find in the description for this video where you have this sweet Desmos activity. In the Desmos activity, you're going to need to define whichever function you're interested in studying. So you see that I replaced what they had there before with the rational sigmoid function that I was doing on the board. The only difference here is that um, when you're using Desmos, the input variable is usually x and the output variable is usually defined as y. And so you see that where I had x of t before, now I have f of x. And so everywhere you saw the t on the board, I've got to use the x as the input here. Okay? Um, what we were talking about before was starting by visualizing the secant line between the points t is equal to 1 and t is equal to 1.5. And where you see that play out on this Desmos activity is that the value of a here is going to be the starting point. So you see if I play with this slider here, you're going to see the value of a, you can see it down here in blue, and the corresponding output value marked as p right here, and you're going to see that travel along with whatever I'm calling a at the time. So there you go, set it right at 1 because I was using a starting point of t is equal to 1 on the board. My other point I was using is 1.5, and how that's denoted here is by defining the delta t, which is called h here on this link. And so um, if I set h is equal to 0 0.5, you're going to see that the point a plus h is equal to 1 that I started with plus a change in time, or input variable x here, of 0 0.5. And so here's the 1.5 that I had on the board before. And you're going to see that that's the point marked q. And this red line is the secant line that connects them. So the slope is the difference in the outputs divided by the difference in the input. And here the difference in the input, delta t, is denoted as h. That's why you see the h on the bottom. And the slope value that they get here is um, pretty much the same thing as I had worked out on the board, except they have it to more digits. So theirs is a little more precise. Okay? Um, I didn't want to go through it over and over again by hand, but if you want to know what um, the slope of the secant line will be for two points closer together, I could change the delta t maybe to point 0.1. And then when I change that to point 0.1, you see that P and Q got closer together. And the slope actually went up by quite a bit. Now it's 0 0.70999. What if I want to get even closer? What if I use 0, 0.1 for delta T? And you can see that they're incredibly close together now. And the slope has gone up a little bit more. It's 0.746. OK, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the H, which represents delta T, to be smaller and smaller and smaller. Each time I add another zero, I'm going to be reducing the delta t to tenth of its previous size. And I want you to take a look at how the value of m changes as I take, uh, kind of numerically, the limit as delta t goes to zero by making it smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And I can really do that for a while. And you see that it seems like the slope um, is it kind of approaches a limiting value, and that limiting value seems to be around, uh, okay, maybe that was a little too small, um, seems to be around 0 0.75. Yeah, I think if I make it too small, some numerical error kind of kicks in there, and so that's why I toggled more than I expected. But this is close enough to say that the approximate derivative um, to this function at the point where the input value is equal to 1 the instantaneous rate of change is approximately 0 0.75. Well, that's pretty cool. I wonder what the approximate instantaneous rate of change is for other points on this curve. So I'm going to take this slider A and I'm going to move it to different points. Like how about down here? You're going to see that the rate of change is a bit smaller. It's only about 2.25 down there. And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. 
and then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller as we start to top off and approach the vertical asymptote at one. Okay, that's pretty cool. And then um, for a last little bit, like I was saying, we could actually change the power that we're using. And we're going to see that um, when you increase the power, like let's say that we did it to the fourth power instead of just the third power, the slope at that same point that we were studying before is quite a bit larger. You see the slope here for the tangent line now, before it was 0 0.75, now it's 1.0. And if we do it to the fifth power, you're going to see that it gets steeper still. So if I did it to the fifth power, now it's 1.25. If I did it to the sixth power, that's going to be 1.5. And the higher and higher I raise the power on this rational function, um, the larger the uh, tangent line is going to be at this point. And that means that the graph is getting steeper and steeper. And so in terms of what the instantaneous rate of change means, we're talking about a uh, steeper and steeper response, um, which is more and more sensitive um, as we increase the powers there on that rational function.